Hello there. This is Tech Trends, the program that takes you on the ride in 25 minutes to seek out innovation and creativity that are unique to Africa. On the program this week, we feature a celebration of this year's Bitcoin Pizza Day, which is a remembrance of the first physical Bitcoin transaction in 2010. And then I talk to Obina Anusiem, CEO and founder of NGX on the Nigeria Data Protection Bill 2022. A warm welcome to the program. I'm Olaemi Utunuga. Digital currencies present a chance for money to truly become information and for the creation of a global financial system that is truly frictionless, open and uncensored. The vision we once had for the internet. Every year in the month of May, members of the global cryptocurrency community come together to celebrate the first documented purchase of a good with Bitcoin, marking a pivotal moment for cryptocurrency. And the first item that was bought was pizza. Since then, in remembrance, Bitcoin Pizza Day is appropriately named. On May the 22nd, 2010, Floridian programmer and an early Bitcoin miner named Laszlo Hanyet paid 10,000 Bitcoins worth $41 to have two pizzas delivered. <laughs> Fast forward to 2023, the day now commemorates the first time cryptocurrency was used to buy products in the real world. <laughs> Over a dozen years after that iconic transaction, which has now become an annual celebration of the Bitcoin Pizza Day, the global crypto community comes together on that same day to celebrate the first physical Bitcoin transaction and to reminisce on how far the industry has come. A kid who makes sure people get the right knowledge about the industry. In Lagos, Members of the Crypto Bootcamp community gathered for a hangout to mark the milestone, spread word on the adoption of cryptocurrency to the mainstream and continue the tradition by taking a bite of the Bitcoin pizza. I see it as the biggest move of adoption and if it is the biggest move of adoption, then we need to take it seriously. We need to use it as a uh, occasion to spread more adoption into the mainstream because until we spread adoption to the mainstream, people will not be able to enjoy what Bitcoin Pizza Day has done for us, right? Bitcoin has given us access to financial inclusion. It has given us the opportunity to create wealth. And we are seeing massive economic development happening, right? Um, lots of job creation because the industry is growing, more workforce is needed, all because Bitcoin succeeded and a whole new economy, a whole new industry, a whole new sector was created. Let's talk about innovation, let's talk about solution, let's talk about adoption, let's talk about the growth of the industry, how we can make Africa bigger with the opportunity that blockchain has given to us. The reason why we're here is for the adoption of cryptocurrency and not just pizza, what it's actually doing for us. Like for example, uh, remittance itself, you have no idea the amount of financial institutions that are actually riding at the back of cryptocurrency without even telling you. We are so happy that at least, at least uh, someone was able to take us from just being a mining team or just being a programming team to at least taking it to the next stage. Two panel sessions are lined up for Bitcoin enthusiasts, disruptors and developers in Web3 to learn more about cryptocurrency and factors that contributed to its rise. Crypto can be used for different things, to book rides, to even buy a time, to book hotel stays, different things that was not necessary. You must use um, Naira or Fiat. But when these things come and people can use in their day-to-day -day lives, like, it becomes a bit easier to onboard people. As that before, Bitcoin was just a faceless, um, faceless coin. People didn't really understand what it was. People thought it was scam. People thought people are not really even willing to be open and say, "Oh, I own Bitcoin," or "I even know what it is." So one of the misconceptions that I feel about Bitcoin that needs to be clarified is that the purpose of Bitcoin is to be a decentralized crypt um, cryptocurrency that is devoid of government control. 
And when there is no regulation or control on something, you should expect the stock to be volatile because speculations is the biggest driver of Bitcoin's price. That's why Bitcoin can go down and come up and go down and come up. One way to view the adoption of Bitcoin is by ensuring proper regulation because when there is regulation, you remove the bad players. So I believe that with time, we are going to have more innovations in the Bitcoin ecosystem like the Lightning Network, which makes transactions faster. And we are expecting that Bitcoin will continue to hit the adoption beyond just El Salvador and Central African Republic. We need countries that matter to actually adopt Bitcoin to ensure that we have proper circulation of the token. And also countries like Nigeria should definitely look for ways to adopt cryptocurrency and Bitcoin to our ecosystem to drive our economy. The second panel session put the spotlight on the impact of Bitcoin adoption in Africa as well as the future of innovation on the continent. Sometimes when we approach innovation, including blockchain technology, we do so in a vacuum. And when we do that, we shall change ourselves. But when we understand these things in a context, the big picture begins to get real, 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 look real good. Talk about the digital economy. There has always been the idea of distrust. And for centuries, man has distrusted man. And the idea of bringing in intermediaries and middlemen or third parties has always been the only innovative way by which men can take care of the trust issue. Now, the blockchain has come to take care of that. And that's why we call it a trustless technology, because it does not require trust, human trust, to be able to carry out safe and secure transactions. All it needs is that technology, which we know today, there's a network, there's a protocol, there's a peer-to-peer -peer network. You don't need a central body to make it happen. When we look at the Nigerian in different sectors in Nigeria, there are multiple ways that that can be implemented, from land titles to birth certificates, um, college results. There are a lot of things that can be put on the blockchain, and that basically changes the way we interact with each other. Because now I'll be able to trust whichever information I get on you. And that change unlocks a lot, especially in human capital. So I am happy to work with you because I trust the information I have. I'm happy to work with you because I don't need to depend on you. I, de I believe that the technology is doing its job. So that's where blockchain I see would play a lot of roles and they are currently already doing that. For other Bitcoin lovers, the day goes beyond posting Happy Bitcoin Pizza Day as they believe it's an opportunity to appreciate the disruptive power of cryptocurrencies and the role they continue to play in empowering individuals. For like four years, Bitcoin was just dormant. Nobody was willing to accept Bitcoin. People actually went to financial, uh, what was it called, conferences. They were told about Bitcoin. And after the event, just like this, they were offering them free Bitcoin. They didn't collect. They were like, don't, never mind. But today, the fact is the case. In fact, no one is even willing to share, like, yet you don't want to share any Bitcoin. Because it's very expensive. So, this particular event that occurred years back has helped, has helped in asking that why. And more people are willing to learn more. That an investment of, or let me say, a pizza or Bitcoin worth 5,000 Naira many years ago is today worth over 270 million dollars. Every year it is increasing, right? More people are getting to know about this amazing technology and invention because people tend to forget that Bitcoin is a technology, you know, beyond being a currency, beyond being an, uh, a store of value. Right? So that is what we are doing. We want to talk about innovation, we want to talk about growth, we want to talk about adoption, we want to talk about financial inclusion, you know, we want to talk about access to on open markets, right? How can people be able to uh, assess um, financial economy and um, prosperity with ease, you know, and even at a fast rate and at a very cheap rate. The historical significance of Bitcoin Pizza Day is evident in the use of Bitcoin to purchase real-world products. Unknown to Laszlo, it sets a precedence for future use cases of cryptocurrencies. And while many would assume that Laszlo made a foolish decision at the time, it is important to not just focus on the Bitcoin Pizza price, but on the larger implications of how Bitcoin Pizza Day 
fit into different narratives of the growth of Bitcoin. Inaugurated by the Moroccan head of government, Aziz Akanoch, and other top dignitaries at the opening ceremony, the agenda is simple. Become the leading platform for the world to engage with the tech ecosystem and talents in Africa on African soil. To have the privilege to attend the first ever JITEX on the African soil is a testament to our collective commitments to driving the digital innovation and transformations across our beloved continent. A fitting charge for the thousands of exhibitors, investors and startups in attendance, including the over 60 startups from Nigeria. So the whole idea is that some of them are being supported by Dubai World Trade Center and also to Lagos State Government and uh, NIDA as well. But the belief is that, it, you know, we are, we are in a world whereby it's no longer looking for a job. So it also helps to create opportunities, set preliminary opportunities for our startups, also to help to increase the foreign direct investment to the country. Because some of them here, they're going to be meeting investors. We will bring in the much needed cash to support our local economy. Lagos State Governor Abajide Songwolu takes a tour of the various startups, including Dawn and Imperial EdTech, both educational startups from Lagos. Actually, he was intrigued by what we were building and done. And I feel like the Lagos State, in fact, is going to be a huge beneficiary of done. Because I personally, I went to a, growing up, I went to a public school, and I I went back to the public school to do some research, and I realized that. A lot of people are actually dyslexia. So I, I, first thing I'll be doing is to onboard those students. Right now in Lagos State, we supplied about 3,000 devices in Lagos State. So, and we're building a modular line in Lagos State as well for, um, as a repair center for manufacturing of devices and also training for of hardware specialists. In my own city state, Lagos, we're experiencing the genesis of digital revolution first hand. I've been a governor for four years, and I can say that year on year, we've seen that that growth trajectory are coming in. We're seeing higher numbers of investment coming in into our city, you know, into the tech startups. Um, and Lagos is home to most of the innovative, successful startups that we have. I'm sure you know that some of the unicorns that we have in Africa are in Lagos. In an interview with Channels TV, he speaks of his vision for Lagos to host Giotex Africa in the near future. For my research, you know, Morocco has been on this for the past three to four years. So you could say that they've been ahead of us, you know, on this conversation, and rightly so, they have it. But you know, we're also pitching to make sure that maybe the next year or two, we can bring guy text to Lagos. Well, to Nigeria, but to Lagos preferably, you know, and, and that, that would be one of my, my desire, you know, to come up with a massive international conference like this, you know, to be in our city. With an exciting start to Giotex Africa on day one, many look forward to continuing the conversations and the connections for the next two days. In February 2022, the Nigeria Data Protection Bureau was established to replace the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, as the key regulator of the data protection and privacy space in Nigeria. In October 2022, the NDPB published a draft of the Nigeria Data Protection Bill 2022 with a view to being the legal framework for data privacy in the country. The central objective of the bill is to safeguard the fundamental rights and freedoms and the interests of data subjects as guaranteed under the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria. My guest, Obina Anusiem, CEO and founder of NGX, gives us a review of the bill. Why has it become increasingly important to have continental conversations on data security and privacy? Yes, well, I, I think if you observe what's going on across Africa, where there's a lot of regional integration um, amongst countries and, and continent-wide, if you see, you know, like the AFCTA that was recently passed, you can see a lot of effort around, you know, collaboration uh, within African countries. 
and with technology the way it is today, there's a lot of data, um, there's a lot of information that's crossing boundaries, you know, across um, crossing boundaries using technology. So definitely, you know, privacy and uh, data security, ensuring that you know countries are aware of what what's happening with the um, information that their citizens are providing, where it's going, how it's being stored, and all that is essential. And essentially, essentially, as Africa is positioning itself to be one of the growth engines of the world, it is essential for Africa as well to be um, a good um, constituent of their own data and understand what's happening to the data and figuring out how best to maximize the opportunities that the data um, offers. Can you give a brief overview of what the Nigeria Data Protection Bill is about? Yeah, so the um, Data Protection Bill is really kind of like more of an extension of the uh, NDPR, which was passed by NIDA in 2019. Um, essentially, it's just more of providing um, a, a more of a single entity per se, or single uh, custodian of data protection, protection for Nigeria. So what it does is that it provides a legal framework for the protection of data for Nigerian citizens, you know, more in line with ensuring that the citizens get the rights and freedoms that were enshrined in the 1999 constitution. So it's, if you understand what the, um, the, the NDPR, which was passed by NIDA, NIDA a couple of years ago, this just provides more of um, an institution and a framework that says, you know, they are going to be responsible for data protection for Nigeria and Nigerians. And what is the core objective of the bill? The core objective of the bill is really around ensuring the privacy of the data that Nigerians uh, that Nigerians provide, Nigerian citizens provide. Um, with the uh, NDPR, it was more around Nigerians anywhere in the world, but this study, um, this bill now provides more protection, just really for um, people operating in Nigeria, Nigerians in Nigeria. You know, so again, it's just really around ensuring that the information that you provide to entities. Um, is really secure and the entities are held responsible for uh, the security of the data and ensuring that they communicate to the individuals that they receive the data from any breaches, any issues with the data and um, complying with the regulatory environment. There have been attempts since 2018 to pass a data protection bill into law, but without much success. Is there any confidence that this will change soon, especially with the entry of a new administration? Um, yeah, yes, I, I think so. I think, you know, there's been in the last couple of, I'll say maybe two years or so, there's a lot of accelerated effort to actually get this bill out. I think, um, I think in February of 2022 was when President Buhari established the, um, I think the Data Protection Bureau, and that the Data Protection Bureau is the one that uh, spun off this bill. And the bill was um, initially, um, uh, you know, the attempt was to make the bill, at least get the bill assented to, I think, by December of 2022. And I think that didn't happen. But the FEC, as of February, I think, of this year, approved the bill, and then it's moved on to the National Assembly. So I think it's just a case of, you know, time just ran out with this administration. But right now, I think, to the best of my understanding, it's, it's at the National Assembly for ratification. And I think, you know, um, it's in the best interest of the, of the country. It's a good bill. So I, I don't see any reason why with the current administration coming in and with some of the things that they put out as feelers, I definitely think that this is something that will, you know, we will see in place in the next couple of months, if not, you know, right as soon as they get started. And would you say the bill is an improvement on the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation 2019 or merely a duplication of it? Um, it is it is an improvement. It's an improvement in the sense that the um, data protection bill, the NDPR, was essentially um, kind of like an ancillary bill from uh, NITA. And what this does is that it provides a kind of like a standalone bill that establishes a commission and then clarifies and closes a lot of gaps the NDPR, um, the, you know, had. You know, as essentially like in this case. Um, there's certain things where, for example, the NDPR focused more on the data subject, which is somebody like you and I who are providing information and you know protection for the data subject. But with this bill, it extends it further and talks more around you know the data controllers, the data processors, and the data controllers are those who determine how and why the information is collected and processed, and the data processors are those that process the data. So this bill takes what the um, NDPR what the NDPR did 
or, or stated and then you know extends that and in fact it is actually transitionary where the uh, bureau I think this the the bureau is actually going to transform into the Nigerian Data Protection Commission so it is definitely a good bill that um, and, and improves on the existing regulation. How would the bill ensure data protection at its maximum? Uh, in terms of data protection at its maximum, I'm not sure. You know, I think it's uh, data protection is a fluid environment, right? Because you always have good and bad actors, you know. So I think it's something that first we need to get started on it, right? Um, even with the bill in its present form. Um, as it as it was published, has a lot of gaps and uh, a few things were not defined. So um, th that needs to be done first, where you know it's ratified and the full bill is put put out there. And then as the environment continues to evolve, you know there has to be some adjustments to the bill. So in terms of maximum protection, again, I'm not sure that anything can definitely provide maximum protection. But in terms of you know improving the, the, on the current uh, regulatory environment and providing an environment where the average citizen and provider of data is better secure around their the information that they provide and their privacy is more or less guaranteed and protected. I think it definitely does a good job at that. How critical is this bill to the development of Nigeria's digital economy? I, I think it's definitely uh, very critical. I mean, if you look at the what's happening in the rest of the world today, I mean, the digital economy has exploded, right? And Nigeria, just like the rest of Africa, is kind of lagging behind, um, where essentially we have been more of the consumers and more of the product of the, you know, of the large, say, let's say, tech companies. We use that as an example. You know, so for example, the large tech companies, you know, use uh, take take our data, you know, as Nigerians, and we essentially don't get anything in return. Number one, I mean, we use the services, but beyond that, we don't get anything, and we don't have any assurances in terms of. What are they using the data for? How are they using the data? How am I sure if I'm sitting down in Nigeria that this data is going to be protected? And then at the same time, you know, those amounts, those large vats of data provide additional opportunities, right, which they're able to maximize. And those things and don't necessarily translate into direct benefits today for Nigeria, right? So if you have a situation where, you know, the, the bill is, is putting restrictions on the companies and making sure that, for example, uh, information on Nigerians that's being collected in Nigeria cannot just be sold to other com to other companies or transferred to other countries. Then it becomes something that becomes resident in say Nigeria and creates more opportunities for that data to be maximized. You know, what I mean, like you hear people say, data is the new oil, right? And that's because you know that's where there's a lot of opportunity. I like to think of it as data is the new sand. It's everywhere. You know, everywhere you turn, there's data. But you know, having the ability to harness that data and store it properly, and then do the analysis and extract value out of it, is something that we've been lack, uh, we've been lacking. And I think the bill gives us at least a leg start on that and puts us in an opportunity, puts us in a position to maximize those opportunities. Thank you so much, Obina, for joining us on Tech Trends. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And that's our show this week. If you missed any part of it, you can always catch up on the channel's TV YouTube account where we have all of our episodes. And I encourage you to watch, share, and like your favorite editions. Remember, tech trends easier to share insights, trends, and developments happening in the tech space. For tech trends, I'm Olayemi Udunuga. I'll see you next time.